So I've been trying to decide what to do. I need to do the Patreon print for March and I want it to be like mushroom themed this month. I've been drawing a bunch of stuff as you probably just saw. Decided to like talk and draw at the same time because I think it's a little bit more interesting. I might do like a mushroom dog. I did kind of a sketch of it at the top, this one. And I kind of want this to be like the print, maybe? Do a little illustration of this. I might do a drawing on the next page and explore this a bit more. It could be like a nice like vertical print. That was terrible, terrible rectangle I just drew. And you just see like little mushrooms coming out of his fur and they like get bigger. I think this would be pretty, pretty fun to do. The thing about this sketchbook is that the back side of the watercolor paper is not good for watercolor, which means I need to flip two pages to do this. Um, but that's okay. Dog is here. And dog's face. Eye, nose. Dog. And he's gonna be really fluffy. I don't like to do detailed animal eyes because I just like them to be like just circles. Very simple. I don't even know how well you can see this because the pencil's so light, but this is what I do when I sketch. Maybe we have like a little mushroom here that dips down. Trying to just plan the composition a bit. I like doing the little like fungus ones, like the shelf ones. What are they called? There's like a name for them that appear on like tree trunks and kind of look like little steps. I like doing that on like the body of the animal. I think with this one, I'm going to try to drop down like a wash of the same color. I think I'll use my nice watercolors. Yeah, the palette's really clean. I'm going to use my nice ones. Not that these ones aren't nice, but these ones are pretty nice. And I want to get more use out of them. And most of all, the palette is very clean. So I'll probably just do like a warm tone. Yeah, these are pretty saturated. Very transparent yellow. I've got a base tone down, which kind of helps tie everything together. So, now time to choose some mushroom colors. Let's do a little purple one here. I like to vary the hue within the color, so Instead of just making it red, I'll add some like other colors too and leaving some white spaces. I just like having like a mix of harsh and soft lines. Just what I've been finding works for me lately. It's a pretty bright purple. So maybe I'll go in with some brown. The purple seems pretty granulating. I want these like sort of shelf ones to be yellow. The 
before we go on with the rest of the video, I want to thank this video sponsor, which is Notion. I've been using Notion for a few years, basically every day to plan everything about my life. It's the one planner that I found that actually works for me and I'll show you why. We're still in the beginning of the year and if you'd like to get organized and really take control of organizing your weeks, I think Notion is a great option. It's completely free. It is very unique. I haven't seen anything else like this before and everyone's Notion workspace looks different and it's cool to see how everyone uses it. Everything is very customizable and there's links within links and you can organize so many different things within your own customizable workspace. I've revamped my Notion workspace um, since my last video, so I'll show you what it looks like here. Basically, you can have your own page, you can upload your own header, I have a little photo of my studio here, a little emoji can go here, you name your workspace, I put a little image here, and I have a week generator here and this is a button that when you click it it generates a new template for your week and I have my patreon posts here with headings and everything is in its own section and these are all links to their own pages so when you click on it it takes you to your very own page there's just so many different ways to use notion i could talk about it forever and explain how i use it this is the board where i keep track of my shop updates and what i am currently working on and what status the products are in this is actually in my template and i'll link my template in the description this is what my current template looks like um, it's a little bit different from what I currently use. This worked very well for me when I was using it. My current workspace is inspired by Apple Cheeks and a few other little templates I found online. So I can't really claim this is my own template. This is what my week looks like. I put a little image that represents what I'm sort of inspired by, a little emoji here of what I'm, I'm inspired by, the date, I put my focus here. I don't have one for this week. Um, I put a little doodle I've made recently to kind of like inspire myself. I have backlinks to the pages I use a lot. I have my priorities here and I have checklists under each day. Checklists keep me organized. I love you can drag and drop between columns. And honestly, Notion makes it really fun to like complete all the tasks you need to get done because it's just very aesthetically pleasing. There's a dark interface and a light interface. I honestly really like the light interface. I think it's really cute and aesthetically pleasing, but I keep it dark just to help my eyes and not just like have so much light shining at myself all the time. And honestly, Notion has helped me stay organized and it's helped me keep track of all the projects I need to do. I have so many different facets to my career and so many things to keep track of all the time. And it's honestly really helped me stay organized and with this new year maybe it will help you too make sure to check out my link in the description to install notion using my link helps me out there's really nothing to lose and if it's confusing at first i promise you'll get the hang of it so thanks so much to notion for sponsoring this video i really appreciate it and on to the rest of the video like i said the main difference between these watercolors and the ones i usually use are these are more transparent which means you're gonna see the grain of the paper come through more um which means I have more of like a, a very like fresh light appearance, like like light is shining through them because like the white of the paper shows through and it's not going to be as chalky. Sometimes I do like the thicker chalky look, but sometimes I just like this look and they also spread among themselves more than my other ones. They, they like bleed more. So it just depends on how you work. You kind of have to adjust what you do for each type of paint you use. And each color is going to behave differently as well. Just because of like the chemicals they have to use and like the pigments to make the, the color what it is. I'm constantly like drying off my brush and thinning out the color because I start with a very saturated bead of color and then I, I kind of pull it down with water. I kind of want this dog to have like dark features to contrast with the mushrooms, um, but that is kind of scary to do. It's always scary to put in a really dark color, but I find it's like worth it because you need that contrast. I want to do like a whitish one, like a bluish whitish, like a gray one, I guess. Watercolor can take so long, especially since I have so many little colors here and there.
See how much this spread when it wasn't even that wet and it's more of like a, I don't know, it's definitely a different texture than the other watercolors, but this is pretty fun to try out um, these colors again. Maybe I'll use these for a bit. They last so long too. Um, the color just goes such a long way because they're really concentrated. I really like doing gradients between colors. It just helps everything come more alive if you don't paint it. Paint it one color all the way through. Like, just sh shift the color a bit. It's, um, it's, it can be a bit tedious to, like, change colors with watercolor, but it's honestly worth it, and it kind of, like, makes your life easier down the line. This is pretty detailed. <laughs> more um involved than i thought but it's really fun i'm having fun i've been tr i've been thinking lately that when i go to draw sometimes i'm like um oh i really want to draw this and then my brain goes but you always draw that and it therefore it's not very original and you should only try to draw things that are like really different each time and i don't actually like end up doing that but my brain tells me that like it's bad to do the same thing a lot but I don't think it's bad to do that because there's like such a thing as like a niche in, in what you like choose to draw. Because some, some of my favorite artists, all their paintings are like centered around the same sort of like theme and sets of like ideas and colors and like subjects. And I love their art and I'm not like, oh, you always draw that. You should draw this instead. I just like what they do. So I'm trying to like just draw things that I really want to draw regardless of whether I've done it a lot in the past or not. Because I, I don't think it's bad to like draw the same thing and just like vary it. Like it can be a series of all these like, of this like mushroom animal thing I'm doing, but I want it to be like a bunch of different animals. And I don't think that makes each one like less valuable just because it's similar. Like if anything, it's cool to have a series. So I'm trying to sort of change my thinking about all of that because whenever I do Patreon, I'm like, this needs to be like something like really cool and like different from what my normal stuff is, but still be sort of similar to my normal stuff. But I need to draw something that I haven't drawn in a long time. Um, and sometimes it's good to like push yourself, of course. But if there's something that you just really want to do, you might as well do it. Because... You want to like enjoy yourself in life. You want to like be happy. And if there's something that will make you happy in the moment, just do it. And I decided to just draw the dog with mushrooms and I'm having a lot of fun. And I'm excited to see where this, where, how this turns out in the end. We might be here a while, but to you it won't be as long as it is for me because the video will be edited. I think it might be helpful to use pencil for some of the dark parts and then watercolor so I can slowly build it up. Hard to plan out where all the dark areas are going. It's a bit scary, but it will work out.
So this piece started off very nice. I, I really liked the way it was going. And then something kind of happened when it came to painting the dog. I didn't know what color to make it. And it's almost like I couldn't commit to making it light or dark. And I didn't know like what pattern of fur I wanted to use. And I wasn't really sure what to do. And I honestly should have stopped it at the pencil crayon phase that you're kind of seeing now um but this is like a whole half hour recording of me like messing up the face really badly and then having to fix it with gouache and getting really frustrated and really like scared about how it's turning out and really sad because I was I was super excited about this painting but I really forced myself to step away from it a few times even when it was looking really ugly to me um and it might look fine to you but like it just wasn't really like turning out the way I, I envisioned it to and it wasn't like matching the sort of feel I wanted it to have. There was way too many details, there was like really harsh areas and dark areas and I think I just kind of like lost the rhythm at some point. Um, so and, and I, I, I even forgot to click record audio, that's how like how like frustrated I was and scared of it not turning out and I really wanted it to turn out for the March Patreon print. But I pulled it together in the end. I did some digital on it as well, and I think I'm actually pretty happy with the way it turned out. And I'm glad I stuck it through and really took my time with the gouache and blending it into the, the watercolor. Um, usually if this happens, it's best to just start over, honestly. Um, but because I was filming a video, I didn't really have the energy to like re-voice over everything. And I, I was happy with all the footage I got up to that point. And when the face gets extremely dark, I'm just kind of like, oh no, like what have I done? This is way too dark and it just looks like strange and I can't tell what's what's happening um, on the painting. But I wanted to share this part with you because not everything works out the first time. Not everything works out the way you want it to. And it is possible to fix things. And sometimes it's easier to just completely start over and you're going to be happier and have less of a headache. But I was like, you know what? I got some gouache. I have some time. I've already been filming a whole bunch. I don't want to scrap all my voiceover that I liked and, and everything about the video so far. So I'm going to try to take my time and calm down and fix it with the paint. And it was a push and pull for a really long time. But I think I eventually got it to a place where I liked it. Um, and... Then I was able to finish the mushrooms, but once I finished the mushrooms, I just didn't like the way... I, I liked the way they looked, but it, it suddenly looked like a different style. It was like everything was outlined in the same color, and I kind of got lost in like outlining things over and over, and everything just kind of started to look the same. And I was like, you know what? I think this is a good like underpainting to scan in to my iPad and fix it up digitally because usually I can really make things look a lot nicer on my iPad because I already have that that base scan of the traditional painting and then I can enhance it and change whatever I want on the iPad so it's like the best of both worlds and I tried to get it looking as good as I could in my sketchbook but there came a time where I was like I don't want to touch this anymore. I'm going to wreck something. I'm just going to scan it the way it is and bring it to my iPad and try to finish this once and for all. It was a journey. It, it honestly was like really exhausting trying to like, if, if you're an artist, I think you know this feeling when you're really liking the way something is turning out and then suddenly you're like, oh no, like you just get that feeling like, I, I don't think I can come back from this. I think I've already like ruined it too much and something is going to really have to change or I'm going to have to start over. But I wanted to show you that whole process because it takes a lot of energy to like overcome that sort of slump and it can really ruin your day, honestly. I tried to not let it ruin mine. I tried really, really hard. I, I took a break. I walked away, had a snack. I tidied my desk, packed some orders. Then I came back to it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you check out Notion. Thanks so much to Notion for sponsoring this video. Um, I honestly use it every single day and I really recommend it to anybody who wants to organize their life or their business or anything like that. This will be available next month on Patreon along with a mushroom dog type of sticker thing and a random scan from my sketchbook or a few sketches from my sketchbook printed out in a little postcard. 
You can get all that mailed to you if you pledge before March 1st. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Another little announcement is my shop will be opening March 4th is the tentative date unless something gets really delayed, but I'm hoping it's gonna arrive in time. So March 4th is what I'm saying um, for that. So my store is going to update by March 4th. So there's all, all those little announcements. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun and frustration filming this, but I think I'm happy with the results. It was really a lot of work, honestly. Um, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.